Mega star Kanye West continues to face backlash after posting an anti Semitic rant on Twitter and across other platforms. Although West was temporarily banned from some social media sites, his message is still available on other sites like TikTok. Let's bring in now the CEO and National Director of the Anti Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt. Also with us, co anchor of CNBC Squawk Box, Andrew Ross Sorkin. Uh, and Jonathan, I want to read you a, a, an op-ed in the Financial Times. Uh, Endeavor's uh, CEO, Ari Emanuel, uh, is calling on businesses to cut ties with Kanye West. And he writes this. It's not enough for Twitter to lock the rapper Kanye West out of his accounts. West's business partners across the fashion and entertainment industry also need to speak out and take action. West is not just any person. He is a pop culture icon with millions of fans around the world. And among them are young people whose views are still being formed. Silence is dangerous. It allows forms of hatred and racism, including anti-Semitism, to spread and become normalized. It coarsens and degrades our society and country. This is why it's necessary for all of us to speak out. Hatred and anti-Semitism should have no place in our society, no matter how much money is at stake. This is a moment in history where the stakes are high and being open about our values and living them is essential. Silence and inaction are not an option. Uh, Jonathan, uh, I take it that you agree. Uh, do you also believe that businesses and partners of Kanye West should speak out and pull away from him until uh, he renounces anti-Semitism in all forms? Yeah, Joe, look, I think Ari Emanuel is exactly right. Fighting hate is an all-hands-on-deck effort. We've all got to be on the field and play our part. And it was important that Meta on Instagram and Twitter took him offline when he was inciting violence by talking about going death con three against Jewish people, when he was talking about other kind of anti-Semitic tropes. And then he doubled down on Chris Cuomo again last night and Piers Morgan. So look, business has a role to play. I mean, let's be honest, brands seem to mediate so much of our lives today. And Adidas in particular, we should talk about here this morning. You know, Adidas's Yeezy line that they developed with Kanye drives somewhere reportedly about $2 billion a year, Joe. And while they announced that the partnership was under review after the White Lives Matter controversy a few weeks ago, his anti-Semitism, his vicious anti-Jewish attacks haven't merited a peep from Adidas leadership. Literally not a blip. So I've got a letter that I just posted to Adidas CEO Casper Rotmer, along with Adidas chairman, who's also the CEO of Bertelsmann, Thomas Rabbi. And we think it's critical, critical, that Adidas that says it's a values-driven company live those values, like Ari Emanuel wrote, and drop him. I mean, what else do they need to review? The reality is, in a moment when anti-Semitic incidents are on the rise, when all of hate has been amplified, for them to be monetizing Kanye, and I should point out, they are still dropping his shoes, even while the partnership is under review. They actually, Joe, have a, sh a new Yeezy slated to drop on October 27th. That's the four-year anniversary mm. of the massacre at the Tree of Life Synagogue. Oh, my gosh. Well, let me ask you a, a two-parter for you. First of all is this mental illness defense. They say, well, it's well-established Kanye West is bipolar. As Ari writes, and many people have said, there are tens of millions of people, hundreds of millions of people in the world with mental illness who don't speak this way, mm -hmm. who don't use anti-Semitic um, rhetoric. Also, I want to get you on the danger of this kind of, someone of his position coming out and sort of opening the door a little bit, right, to this normalization of other people saying, okay, maybe it's okay in the public square to say these things out loud. You're right on both counts. So number one, I don't want to minimize or stigmatize mental illness. I have no clinical background to diagnose Kanye West, but you've got to be deranged to believe that Disney is a quote, Jewish company, or that there are Jewish record companies, or that there are Jewish Zionists plotting to get you. 
So we see this from Richard Spencer. We've seen this from people like Mel Gibson. We've seen this from people like Louis Farrakhan. And now Kanye jumps to the front of the line as probably the most public and unapologetic anti-Semite in America. And look, 31 million followers on Twitter. He's one of the most prominent entertainers in the world. All it takes is one, if you will, deranged person to say, I want to do something about that. The people that are out to get Kanye, I'm going to get them. And I think in the Jewish community, we've learned the hard way that we have to be vigilant. So whether it's Adidas amplifying his brand and monetizing it, or Balenciaga not clearly distancing themselves, now is the time for businesses to say they want to run away from hate and run away from Kanye West. On the part about the danger, just about a month and a half, two months ago, uh, Jonathan, along with Mark Morial, the Urban League and the Asian American groups, and uh, LULAC and I had this hate summit at the White House. And a lot of what we're seeing, I, I don't think we can minimize the danger and the violence that is encouraged by hate speech and the normalizing of it. And I think that we've got to look at it through those lens because when you've got people shooting in synagogues and, and going to tap supermarkets, k- killing 10 uh, blacks because they're black, and then you have somebody saying that I'm going to go uh, uh, calm three or something, or Jews, or, and saying that, uh, that George Floyd didn't die from a knee on his neck, he died from fentanyl. Right. I mean, we cannot act like they have the right to say it, but businesses that support that and subsidize that, they're normalizing that and they make a danger to the country. So that's-